Okay, boys and girls, sports fans, it's Den here. We're still in the area at Tipco Tucon 2013, and today I'm with Marcus Volker, used to be CIO at SBB, now an external consultant, but still with SBB, right? Correct. Okay, and you've had a pretty extensive project optimizing what goes on in a very dense network, right? So just describe the, that early stage um, project that you did. Yeah, the first stage was uh, building up a platform that is able to control and to predict the uh, forecast the train uh, that are currently running on the system uh, in real time to have a basement of making good decisions um, to handle all that traffic on a daily per daily basis. Okay, and, and you, you got some pretty good numbers out of it as well, didn't you? Yeah, actually we increased the functionality, which was pretty high in Switzerland uh, before we started, but we, I think we, we put some efforts in it and increase that functionality, that was the first step. We always expect the Swiss to be totally functional, don't we? <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, if you, if you deliver a product to a client, um, you know, running a train from A to B, I think it's a good service to be punctual. That's one thing for the customer. The other thing is, if you're punctual, you, you can, you know, uh, sell more tracks and uh, have a denser schedule. Right. And denser schedule means money and means capacity. Okay. So we've got the platform in place. Yes. What's, what was the next thing we did? Yeah, well, on top of that platform, we then started to innovate, to, to do more innovative stuff in terms of, um, give you an example, the latest big project, Adaptive Control, um, takes care about unnecessary red light stops in a dense network that happens very often mm -hmm. um, due to many different reasons. And um, we find out if we uh, reduce the speed or let the, um, the software calculate an optimized speed profile, we can avoid that red light stop and we can save energy okay. while doing that. H how does that work? I'm trying to visualize how that would work in terms of I'm driving the train. How will, how what, what, what information am I getting or am I not? Yeah, the first step is again, the platform calculates yeah. their conflicts predictively, mm -hmm. 20 minutes, 30 minutes in advance. Mm -hmm. and, and then it um, finds out the corridor where we, can, um, um, infl um, where we can change the speed profile of that train, then we calculate that speed profile, and then we transmit uh, on every signal or every second signal a speed advice through GSM interfaces to the iPad. Right. And, um, and just displaying it on the iPad, real time in the train driver's cabin. So the train drivers got iPads, yeah? Yes. Wow, that's a bit different, isn't it? Every, every train driver in Switzerland has an iPad. Wow, okay. And presumably you've had quite a lot of work to do to make sure it's very easy for them to understand what's going on, haven't you? Yeah, usability. I mean, there's, uh, first of all, for the, for the production, it was pretty important to have the last missing link, the factor the train driver who knows nothing about what's going around him right. um, to have the, him involved in the whole chain of process. That was super, super important factors first. Second, uh, usability has to be very simple because train drivers have to focus on their tracks. That's yeah. their concentration work. They can't play around with an iPad. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's uh, usability is very simple. And we're now I agree with those guys. Then. Yeah. <laughs> very simple and very yeah. clear. Yeah. And, and uh, many constraints in terms of <coughs> We can't deliver a speed advice when, bef like uh, when the train driver heads in front of a signal because his concentration has to go right. to the signal and mm -hmm. not to the iPad. Right. Uh, other constraints is uh, we can, uh, you know, give them all the time messages. You can just, you know, reduce the speed up all the right. time. So like one or two minutes delay between every uh, single um, single uh, advice messages. That all are constraints. Uh, to, to take care of and to, to calculate into the speed profile optimization. This is a very complex yeah. operation, I would imagine. I mean, the, I'm s sitting there thinking about it and I'm thinking, that's mind-blowing in terms of the complexity given, you know, you've got however many miles of track, you've got many trains, you've got many drivers, and yeah. it's all got to come together seamlessly, right? Yes, yeah, correct. We're detecting conflicts and uh, we have currently 1,000 trains running in this second, in this moment. And everybody's connected to that system right. via typical web messaging. And then, um, while well, I think two to ten percent will have conflicts, mm -hmm. and there's the the machine behind it, then 
calculates for every train in real time their speed optimized profile. And on, on top of that, if you, if you send out that profile or if you send out that speed advice, it's just in time, mm -hmm. and the train driver doesn't, you know, ignores that advice mm -hmm. uh, or that recommendation or whatever, mm -hmm. um, we recalculate it. So right. we always, you know, it, it, when, when we get that train in our focus, um, we, we control and we s try to find out how he is acting and then, uh, um, you know, correcting the speed like five kilometers lower or, or, or higher, what, however the, the conflict situation will change or however he is driving. So it's very, very precise then and presumably yeah. you cannot have errors on this, can you? You can, you, or at least your error rate has to be very, very low indeed. Otherwise you're going to have even bigger conflicts, aren't you? Yeah, that's, that, that's correct. That's, that's the whole miracle about it. To, to control such a dense network is precision as okay. much as possible. What's next? Yeah, next would be uh, um, the door swings in both sides, so I can get some information from the iPad. I'll give you a simple example: um, a train comes in the station, mm -hmm. and the last you know information we get from it is when he passes the last signal in front of the station, and then. However, the train driver is in what mood ever he stops wherever, you know. Right, right. And you know that process of stopping a train and then the same when he gets out of that station, um, when they have a green signal, the train driver is not in the spit of a moment, you know, pushing uh, and, and getting out. So when he's getting out, um, we're using the iPad of the Giro functionality to to measure the movements, and then we get the signal from the iPad back that this train is now trying to leave the station. Mm -hmm. Minutes t sometimes before he passes the first signal outside the station. Right. That is very important information for us. Right. right. So that's the next step. And another next step would be definitely using that uh, technology and that platform not only just for energy savings, it can be also the opposite. Not reducing the speed, mm -hmm. but speeding up mm -hmm. to, to grow the capacity of the network. Right, right. Not fly by wire, but fly by iPad. Fly by iPad, yeah.